I'm David Goldies, and I make things and I make pictures of things. I think of myself as someone who has a very uh, intimate interest in physical phenomenon and it somehow it's become a vocabulary for me. I mean what I do is I make things that are like still lives and then I photograph them but the real effort is to refer to the things outside of the frame. Uh, we're looking at a grid of about 300 uh, matches and this is uh, just a moment after I've lit one corner. Um, and I think I've always been attracted to the ability of photography to record remarkably delicate transformations of things from one state to another. My interest in science is very experiential, uh, rooted in childhood experiments. I think in some ways m many of my pictures are based in my mind um, on the illustrations in science textbooks that I looked at as a kid. I think the reason I work in black and white is to refer back to those pictures. I'm interested in physical phenomenon, probably because of my education in science, but to me it's kind of a starting point. It's a vocabulary, and then I try to build something with that. Maybe I'm interested in the science of the 12-year-old, which is you know, really the science of the 18th century. There's still some piece of all of that that isn't quite resolved for me. Um, the gap between explanation and mystery is really what I'm interested in. David has been awarded six McKnight Fellowships. He won his first in 1983 and has won five or been awarded five since then, which is quite an incredible uh, achievement. David has this very strong science background. He has an MA from Harvard. A lot of people always talk about his work in relationship to this kind of deep investigation of you know, what are essentially very familiar phenomena that happen around us all the time, but that we, we never quite sort of identify or, or isolate. This group of pictures that I call traces were made by uh, wrapping objects in metallic mesh and then removing the mesh, removing the, the object, and then being left with a trace copy. And the, the, the metallic mesh is partially transparent. I came to mesh by accident, basically. Well, I had made a bowl out of mesh and then filled it with water. It was a way to explore the surface tension. So uh, suddenly I had these mesh objects around that had their own um, properties, strange properties. It seemed like mesh allowed me to see something all at once, a kind of ghost-like image to make something material that also had this imaginary quality. So it sat on the boundary between the imagination and perception. What I like about the mesh particularly is that um, it's translucent, transparent in a way that you can't really uh, determine sometimes which object is in front of which object. And so like memory itself, there's an ambiguity to um, what we're seeing. We're not quite sure. Did that come first? Did that come second? What, whatever happened? What's really interesting about this piece, which is called Falling and then Salt uh, from 2009, um, well, first of all, the title tells us what this is. These particles that are sort of like tumbling down are, are salt particles. And at first, if you actually look at this piece, I'm assuming it's a desk that this little table structure is sitting on. It looks kind of like a sea or a horizon line. Um, I think that's because obviously he's focusing in on this part, so the rest kind of falls away into sort of softer focus. Well, David Goldies is known for having pursued a studio-based um, photographic practice uh, in a really rigorous way for quite a number of years. I do like to work in the studio. I mean, why go outside? It's uh, very nice here. There's always an element of, <laughs> of control. Also, the phenomenon that I'm interested in, I'm not going to find uh, walking down the street. Following up on some of the trace pictures made me think about other kinds of relief objects that I might make or other materials. I started working with clay and wanting to think about simple machines we might think about as uh, fossils from this mechanical age. And so what I did was 
I simply press them into a sheet of clay and remove them, once again, leaving a trace that they were here, and then photograph them. Uh, this is the clay surface that I used. Uh, I'd roll it out, um, press a hammer into it, uh, then remove the hammer, and then photograph the residue of the hammer, the memory of the hammer. This is actually a recreation of an installation that I did for a show at MCAT a few years ago. It's called Alexander Fleming's Laboratory of Glorious Contamination. Alexander Fleming, for those of you who don't remember, is the discoverer of penicillin. It was uh, my first sort of move into showing the work as sculpture instead of making a photograph of it. So I built Alexander Fleming's laboratory out of mesh, but I wanted to control it. I made this opening as if one would position a camera in this location. You would have only one vantage point, the photographer's vantage point. And so um, people hopefully come up, uh, many people walk right by it. Some people actually look inside. Here we are behind the viewing wall in the inner sanctum in the memory chamber. And um, so you could actually get a sense of the objects. Uh, most of them were fashioned from imagination or from real objects. Lots of kind of favorite objects. We have an inoculation loop that you might use with any of these petri dishes or that Alexander might have. And uh, here's a favorite, which is just this uh, lovely uh, trace copy of uh, his lab manual. What I really like is the shadows on the wall that have a kind of materiality that almost is greater than the object itself. And it took a little bit to make, but what else are you supposed to do? For me, what's important about David's work is you can track this process within the photographs over the years, how his interests have shifted, how he's searching for new ways to, to come in and tackle something. And it's a kind of an ongoing journey that he's engaged with. What I hope viewers will get out of looking at the pictures is an appreciation for the phenomenon of, of everyday life. The instant, the moment of things, uh, the transitions that objects make, um, the attention that we don't pay to much of what's around us. I think it's a constant struggle to um, keep things fresh. And so I hope that that will Maybe somebody, somebody somewhere will look at these and think about them when they go home and watch the drip from their faucet reveal the rest of the room that's in the drop.